So am I still sharing my screen? Cool. Is it sure that it's recording? Cool. Okay, cool. So yeah, so this is a great, um, cool, great resource here. Uh, this is OpenAI, and this actually is the algorithm we're going to be getting into. It's called Twin Delayed DDPG, Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient. And so this will take you over the background and build, build it up and actually go through implementations as well. And this is just a great resource for reinforcement learning. Um, they have a lot of open like a lot of information. So this is another just great place to learn more about reinforcement learning. Um, here's the paper. This is the TD3, the Twin Delay Deep Deterministic Policy Gradient paper. And it's pretty cool. They just sort of go over um, their results and the implementation and everything like that. Um, so this is the course I used to uh, kind of learn this and implement it. Um, so this is on Udemy. Um, it's Deep Reinforcement Learning 2.0. Um, so I can share this with you as well. I'm not like advocating like go buy it or anything like that. I don't obviously make anything for it, but um, it's just it was a great course for me to learn the implementation. Um, and then we'll get into that later. So actually, I just want to go over this real quick. So this is the full blown implementation of it. And I'll go to one of the further slides that has more of the math behind it. And this is a lot. But basically what twin delayed DDPG is, it's, it's six neural nets that are basically all working in conjunction and feeding into each other, all right? But to start, very simply, it's all basically just deep uh, deep Q learning, okay? So if you would just think about this model right here, so just think about this actor model, don't pay attention to anything else. This actor model is basically all it's doing is deep Q learning, right? This is a deep Q network that we'll get into the hidden layers and all that construction here in a few minutes, but we're taking in the states of the environment we're in we're running that through the network and we're getting basically Q values, right? To help us to determine what action to take. The difference here in this model in particular, in this implementation is instead of minimizing uh, a loss function, which is that Q value from what we expect versus what, what we predict or from what it is versus what we predict, we're doing something that's called um, deep deterministic policy gradient. And so we're doing gradient ascent and we're maximizing the value that, the, that we're predicting here. So just a little bit of a different twist. And okay, so that's basically what we're doing. So um, what we're first gonna do is build this thing called an experience replay memory. And that's basically like if we're playing Mario, we're gonna go explore the level, okay? So we're gonna just set this model up and we're just going to in randomly initiate the weights and we're going to let it just go and explore the environment for 10,000 iterations. Okay, so we're going to build up this memory replay. So then in this memory replay, we're going to have a window that we're going to access and we're going to have like 100, like 100 actions in that window space. Okay, and we're going to take those, that, that, those states so that those states, it's going to be like a batch of states, actions, next states um, and then uh, whether or not uh, we're done with that state, whether there's not, whether or not the, there's a done state in there or not. And we'll kind of get into that in the implementation. So then in that, we're feeding all that into here. And what's gonna be, this is gonna be actually future states though. So right here, we're in the current state we're in. Right now, this is gonna be the future state. So if you actually sit there and think about this, it's almost like the agent is imagining what's going to be happening in the future. So you're sitting there and you're playing Mario and you're, 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 trying, to, you're trying to hop on, you're trying to determine whether or not you should go down the, the tunnel, right? And you're imagining based upon your previous experience of the tunnel, what's going to happen down there. And that's basically what's happening here. So we're taking these states and we're getting the, op the actions in this, okay? And then, okay, well, first also, let me say this. When we run this, we are just then copying these states down here for the very first time. So after we run this for 10,000 times, um, and the, these states too are randomly in, 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 in instantiated, and then we're just copying these down the very first iteration. Okay, so with that being said, so we're, we're, this is the next state, 
we're getting these actions, okay? And then we're feeding both those states into these and in, in these actions into two models, two critic target models. And what these are gonna do is these are gonna predict the future Q value, right? And then we're gonna take the minimum of these two values. And this is, in a, this is one of the features of this algorithm that makes it good. Um, one of the problems with uh, actor critic models is that they are too optimistic. And so they will take the maximum value here and it will um, be overly optimistic. And so you'll lead to a lot of error. What, so what they did to correct that is what these, you get these two values and you feed these two values into your, your, your deep Q function. So the, the Q learning function development equations that we learned today, we feed that into here and um, we're taking the minimum of that. So when we get the minimum of that value, that's gonna be the value that is our, our, our target Q, our Q target value. We're then taking our current states. So the state that we're currently in, so we're on top of the, the thing, and now we're gonna actually go through and complete that action. So we're gonna complete that action, we're gonna get the Q values. And then we're gonna use the mean squared error loss to, min to minimize these Q values in relation to that Q target, okay? Then we go and we do back propagation on this. And so we update our, these models using an atom optimizer. So very similar, you know, it's just basic like neural nets. Okay, and, we, and so we're optimizing, we're back propagating based upon the, that loss function of the mean squared error. And it's actually, we just take the two Q values of this and we add it together. And then we just back propagate on both of them at, at, together with that value. So then what we get is we have this Q value target right here, and we just take that as our Q value target. And so that then is what we are going to be gradient ascending towards in this equation right there. So that's sort of the whole kind of cycle as we go through here. And that sort of, so this portion is the deep deterministic policy gradient. This is an actor critic model, but it's, it's based upon deep Q learning. And it's just sort of a combination of those two things. Now, where we get the twin delayed aspect from it is we actually, um, we don't update the weights of these models every single time through. And we do something a little bit differently as well when we're updating the weights of these models. So we update these weights every two iterations. And you can change that amount of iterations, but um, the, the paper uh, that they like kind of set the parameters that I'll be going over in the implementation. And, um, and so, yeah, so th those are just the optimal ones they found. So every two iterations, we'll be updating these weights. And how we update these weights is something that's called polyac averaging. And all polyac averaging is, is it's a very small number called tau. And so in this implementation, it's 0 0.005. And so we're taking these weights and we're multiplying it by 0 0.005. And then we're adding it to these weights and it's going to be these weights are going to be one minus tau so 0.9 you know whatever that is one minus tau times these weights and then adding these weights so what's going to happen is these model and then we're doing the same for these models too both of these we're taking these weights and then updating it with these through the polyac averaging and so the reason that we do that is um it gives us more learning because if we were just to take the average of these weights let's say if we just average them together, the learning, we wouldn't learn as quickly, it wouldn't be as optimal. If we just copied these, there wouldn't be any like kind of new learning. Um, so what this is doing is slowly but surely these, after enough iterations, these weights will converge to these weights. But by slowly learning, we are able to maximize the exploring elements of these models. So we want these models to explore this, this possibility space as much as possible. And these are the models that are exploiting it. So we're, this is how we're optimizing the explore exploit function like problem in terms of uh, like what we, ex we talked about this morning with the multi arm bandit stuff. So yeah, so it gets a little, uh, little messy with the math, but we'll just quickly, I'll just quickly point out all the math. So this is the um, deep deterministic policy gradient. So this is the gradient ascent that we're doing. And it's basically like this, we're gradient ascending along this Q value, which we're getting from our first target over here. And then uh, the over the policy, so that's the weights of this. And then that is what we're going to then be gradient ascending towards. So this is the, the what I was talking about, the Polyak averaging. And so this is the weights of this model. 
um, theta I, and then theta prime is the weights of this model. And so we're doing tau times that plus one minus tau times that, and that's happening every two iterations. And then same for here, same, same kind of concept. So this you see, we're doing the back propagation on this is related to this one, but here we're getting the Q values and we're using the Bellman equation to get the, the minimum. And we're multiplying that by the gamma, which is our learning weight and adding that to our reward. So that's our Q target. Then over here, we're taking that Q target and we're, we're gonna minimize the loss of the mean squared error of the Q1 here and to the Q target and then Q2 here to the Q target. We're back propagating that and then getting that Q1 value and then that's the cycle. Um, so with that being said, let's hop into the code. Uh, oh no, well, good thing I ran it already. So I ran this on a, uh, a GPU and I'll point out sort of like some of the things I did in the code. Um, this is going to be PyTorch. So I don't know if y'all are very familiar with PyTorch. I, I think most of the stuff we've done is Keras and TensorFlow. So this will be good for you guys to like get a little introduction to that. Very similar though, very similar in this con construction, everything just maybe a little bit of different syntax here and there. Um, so yeah, so here I'm just installing PyBullet. So with PyTorch, we're going to be using PyBullet as the environment. It's very similar, sim similar to the OpenAI gem environment. Um, this implementation I'm going to be doing for the ant problem. And so it's, uh, it's this. And I'll play these here at the end. These are some uh, two of the like, final models that, that perform the best. Um, but just to give you an idea of the problem that we're solving. So like, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't know. I, I don't know how to capture the videos of like the very first kind of iterations, but like you can imagine the very first ones are just kind of like crawling around and then like just flopping around and just going like all random and stuff. Um, but you'll see kind of how smooth it, 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 it operates. Um, also, just so you know, um, in this environment, so you get an idea of the scoring, um, like sort of the minimum is like for walking, for this thing to sort of actually be walking like a toddler is like a thousand, um, 2000 is like really good. That's like kind of moving smooth. Uh, 2,500 would be like, um, uh, is, is basically state of the art. Like it's, it's like running pretty much. Um, I don't know exactly right, what the highest is right now. I have a, I have one website. We'll look at some benchmarking. Um, but I think it's somewhere around like 26 ish is the highest. And so I just limited this. I trained this in two hours. It took to about two hours to train, um, 500 iterations um, on a GPU. So just to get an idea of the timing. So, but fortunately, because I saved these models and it's in the code, you could like load that save model and then just continuously train that. Cause I think like um, you only have access to a certain amount of time on the GPU and collabs. But if you were using like an AWS or something like that, just to get an idea. Um, also I think the code I have here is like periodically checkpointing. If it's not, you can implement that. So let's say you're running and then for some reason you want to stop the GPU, you can checkpoint at a certain point, right. And then just start back off at that iteration of the training. So just something to keep in mind. Cool. All right. So this is just all of our imports, um, getting torch, uh, importing the neural nets. They have a couple of functions that we'll be using. Uh, we're importing the gym environment and um, I don't remember what we use variable for, but we'll see. DQ should be familiar with that. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're creating a class. This is all uh, object oriented programming, but it's like sequential. So hopefully it should be like pretty smooth to go through. Um, so here we're going to, and also this is, I'll be sharing this specifically with y'all. So um, I, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we're creating the experiments, the replay buffer, and this is what's gonna hold up all our memory. And so we're gonna make the size, um, it's one e to the six, so that's like a, a million. Um, that's, I actually code, I wrote all of this out by hand 
but the implementation that they did, they they have that as a syntax. I think that just automatically makes it into a float also, which is, it. I don't know how much that matters, but I think maybe it does because that seemed to be something they did a lot in this. All right, so we're instantiating uh, storage. So this is where we're gonna actually be storing um, our uh, state transitions. We're gonna have the max size equal the max size. And then um, the pointer is gonna just equal to zero. Uh, yeah, and that's gonna relate to that. So here we're just adding everything. So, so long as our storage equals the length size of the storage. Um, storage of the pointer is going to equal the transition. So this is like keeping a track of um, when we're adding things into the replay where we are sort of like index wise. And then we're just going to update that. And if it's not added, so this is like, because we want to keep it to the same size. So we'll like once we go through, then we'll just start like we'll start over and start replacing from the beginning again. Um, so if it's not the size, then we're just going to pin the transition on into the list. And then we're creating a sample. So we're going to, we're going to be sampling randomly sampling from this in the implementation. And then this is just going to be what we're sampling and what we're returning from it is basically, this is the transitions. This is what we need to like for every state basically. Um, and it's the, the current state, the next state, the current actions, the current reward, and then whether or not like that state is an in state. Um, so we're just like making those lists and then just like taking everything and um, appending to the list in an MP array. Um, and then we're returning it. And so down here, when we return some of these things, we're just automatically reshaping them. Um, and that's just going to be due to tensor or PyTorch. You have to get everything into like a tensor, but specifically a torch tensor. And so that's just, um, just to kind of get that out of the way. And like, I guess I, I try to like document this as well as I could, um, and make it as like, you know, user-friendly as possible, but you will probably need to obviously dive in some of the PyTorch documentation to really like get a real good sense of it. Should do that anyways. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we have two actor two actor models we're gonna be making. So we're just gonna go ahead and make one class and that's gonna be our actor class. And then when we instantiate it, we'll just instantiate one as the actor model and one as the actor target. And so here we have our class. And so our inputs are gonna be basically, our inputs and our outputs are gonna be based upon the state dimensions and the action dimensions. And then this max action, I actually didn't mention it in the slides, but this is also another feature of the algorithm. Um, and this helps us, it clips the action space for any state you're in, because there, it is there is possible if you don't do that, that you could be in a state and then have an action that like you would not be able to create do in that state. So in the implementation, we clip the action state to the max action that you're able to do in order to uh, bound, you know, bound yourself. It helps with the learning. Um, and actually, in it related to this, we add a little bit, a bit of ga Gaussian noise to the action states, and I'll get into that. But um, that helps with the learning as well. So another cool kind of thing they do. They, this model, like the algorithm, is just it's it's a work of art, truly. It's like it's like Bach or like you know an Escher painting. It, it really is, especially if you've read Gödel Escher Bach. If you haven't, I would recommend it. Anyways, cool. So uh, we're going to init it, and um, we're 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 inheriting from the um, PyTorch module class, so it gives us some features. So one of those things is we need to um, use the super to init that. And then our first layer is going to take the, our inputs and then it's going to, it's a fully connected um, layer with 400 nodes. Then that's going to feed into a hidden layer fully connected. That's 300 nodes. And then that's going to feed into another layer that then feeds to our output, which is the dimensions of our action space. 
And then so for the forward propagation, we're going to be taking that first layer and we're using a, an activation, a ReLU activation function on it. And so we imported the F functions and then, then we have this ReLU function. And then we're doing the same on the next class. And then here, this is where we're cutting off our action space. So we're running a tan H as our activation function. And then we're cutting it off by the max action space and then we're returning that. So that's the forward propagation of our actor. So we'll be instantiating two of these. Cool. So now we have the critic. So in the critic, we have four critics in the model, right? So we have the two actors and then the four critics. So this was clever of what they did. They just instantiated the two critics in one class. So we just only have to instantiate this class twice, one for the, the, the model and one for the target. So what we're doing here is similar. It's, it's the exact same layout for up here. It just the forward propagation is slightly different. So it's the same structure in terms of the neural nets, uh, 400 to 300 to 300 to the output is the output dimension is only one because we're only outputting to one Q value. Same with the other model. And then the forward propagation, um, so this right here, when we take in, we're taking in the X into this, right? Because in this, we're taking not only the future, the future actions, but we're taking in the future states as well. So those are going to be two different, two different uh, matrices or tensors that we're getting from our replay experience buffer. So to go ahead and and we're go ahead, we're going to go ahead and concatenate those but we have to use the torch concatenation because it's like in a tensor. So that's just, this is what we're doing here. Um, and then I think this is the axis we're doing it on. And then we're feeding that through and on these we're using ReLUs and then we're just outputting to, we're not doing any activation that function on the output and same for the sec second model. So then we're returning X1 and X2 and that's our Q1 and Q2. And then, so this is this is basically the same for all four. And then this, we're go ahead and, and making this function right here, the, this method. And this is in order for us to get just this value right here to, to do the, the deep deterministic policy gradient. So we're just gonna go ahead and define a function in this class to give us just that single Q value. And, but it's the same as these, it just gives us the one value. So, this is where we actually implement the algorithm. And I'm going to kind of speed through this because um, I only got 10 more minutes. But um, this is sort of the meat and potatoes of the algorithm. And this is where like, I basically am implementing everything I sort of went through. All of these steps is, are basically more or less implemented in this. So we're just instantiating all the, vari the different variables that we need. Our actor model, our, ac our actor target model, um, we're, we're instantiating the, the state dictionary um, and the optimizer that we're using. And we're gonna be using the atom optimizer here. And then we're doing the same for the critic. So we have a critic model and our critic target model, and then same thing for these. And then we're setting our max action as well. So we're setting a select action and we are returning the action that we're getting from our state matrix. And uh, also, I guess I can go over this. So this right here is a nice little code thing to where if I'm actually using a GPU, um, I can have it run on the GPU. Otherwise, it'll just run on the CPU. So everywhere you see two device, it's using this logic to determine whether or not it'll go to a CPU or a GPU. So in this right here, um, because this is like just simple math, I can just like train, have this dude to a CPU and I can use that right there. All right. So this is giving us our action state basically like this, the actions that we're going to be taking in given the state that we're in, then we're going to, this is the iterations for the training. So for the number of iterations that we're doing, and I think I, I said that, uh, 500,000, sorry for the scrolling, give me a sec. Mm. 
max time steps. Yeah, 500,000. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, we run it, that's like gonna be 500,000. Sorry. Um, all right, so we're feeding in our replay buffer. So that's gonna give us like all of our experience that we're gonna be like using to like make predictions in the future out like in the target models. Iterations, our batch size. So that's like the number of experiences we're gonna be taking from. So like that window is gonna be a hundred. Um, we're setting our discount factor. Now these are all optimized from uh, the paper. So our gamma and our learning rate is gonna be uh, 0.99. I guess our gamma and our uh, Q, fun Q, Q function that we're optimizing. The tau, this is, relates to the polyac averaging is 0 0.005. The policy noise, which I'll get to is related to the Gaussian. So this is the, like the, like the mean is zero and this will be the standard deviation 0.2. And this is the, the clip that we're gonna do on that specifically is 0.5. And then the policy frequency is how many iterations we're gonna be, like how long the delay is. So obviously for this two, two, but we could change that to three or four or however many you want. Um, so for here, we're just going to iterate through, we're getting our batch states, our state, next state, action reward, and whether or not it's a done state from our replay buffer memory. Um, we're setting our next action. So we're, we're running, we're propagating through. So if I could, I could have self dot actor underscore target dot forward, but the first time I run this, it will automatically run that first function. So I'm, I'm running the next states to get my next action, right? This is in the, this is in the, this is through the target model to get the actions. So that's this model right here that's running it. So I'm running my next states to get my next actions. Um, then this is where the noise is coming in. So I'm, I'm taking those actions um, and I'm clipping it using the normal dis like the normal distribution, setting it the mean to zero, this is the standard deviation. And then we're clipping it from 0.5, negative 0.5 to 0.5. And then the next action, we're taking that and we're gonna go ahead and add that noise to it and then clip that from the max action to the negative max action. Um, then this is where we're feeding it through our target credits to get our target Q values. This is where we're doing our, um, this is where we're selecting the minimum of those two things. This is where we're doing the equation. So the reward plus the discount plus the target Q. And then we're going to go ahead and do one minus done here. If it's a done state, this is going to be a, not a factor. So it'll be zero. If it's not a done state, then this will be factored into it. Um, and then this is just a feature of tensor uh, PyTorch um, because of the computation of tensors. These are like in like a special computational form you have to detach these from those forms in order to then get like access to them to be able to do sort of like basic Python type stuff. Um, so this is what, this is where we're using the two critics here. So now we're here, we're forward propagating our states and actions to get our Q values. Um, this is us doing our loss function. Okay. This is where we're going to go ahead and do our back propagation on the two uh, critic models. So this is how you instantiate the optimizer. This is where you refeed backwards the loss. And then this is how you sort of increment the next step of the optimizer. So we do that for the critic. Um, then we're doing this once every two iterations. So the actor loss, this is this model right here. Once every two iterations, this is when we're gonna be doing the deep deterministic policy gradient. So the gradient ascent. Okay. And so we're gonna, we're, do, we're optimizing the propagation on that. So we're getting that. And then once every two iterations, we're gonna be updating the weights. So this is where we're updating the weights once every two iterations doing the polyac averaging. So that's the implementation of, of this formula right here. And this is the implementation for the critic as well. 
And then I have two functions here where I'm saving it and uh, another function where we can load it. So I got four minutes. Uh, I'm gonna hopefully be able to get through this all. Um, this is just like a way to evaluate the policy based upon 10 episodes and we're just taking the average um, and we're turning the average and printing it out. This is where I'm setting the parameters for the environment. So the environment we're doing is the ant bullet environment. Um, this is just a random seed. The number of steps we're gonna be starting out is 10,000. So this is the number of steps we're starting out to randomly explore. Um, this is how often I'm gonna run this evaluation policy every 5,000. This is the number of iterations we're gonna be doing, 500,000. I'm gonna be saving my model. Um, this is the noise, so it looks like, yeah, this is the noise for the exploration, which I'll get to here in a sec, hopefully. Um, this is the batch size, discount, all that. Um, I'm just then creating folders to save um, my trained models. I'm instantiating the environment here, uh, setting up some environment pr parameters. So setting up the seed for everything. So that's going to take my seed. So like y'all can get the same results I get basically. Um, then I'm setting up the state dimensions, the action dimensions and max size, instantiating the policy. So this is where I'm instantiating my class TD3, instantiating my replay buffer, and then instantiating a list that is going to do the evaluation. So it's evaluating the policy here. This, it automatically will run through one iteration. And so I have this policy. Uh, I have this as my average. So this is like right now what my average reward is just like on a random go through. Um, I'm going to be getting videos and that's what I'm going to be showing you here. So this is just to make a path for that. We're instantiating a couple of more variables. And then this is where we get into the training. Um, So in the training, um, I'm not going to be able to get into all of this, but you can go through the code. It's just the logic of like how you're going to want to go ahead and set everything up. This is where you sort of add a little bit more noise to um, clip the, like you're doing it inside of it, but you're also doing it outside of it as you're going through each episode. So um, that's where the extra noise is coming from. And then, yeah, so this is what took me two basically hours to run. And fortunately I printed it all out so you can kind of see. So the, the first 10,000 episodes up to this point are basically purely random. So I was averaging right around 173 to negative six. You can kind of see it's just hovering around, getting a little bit better, but still kind of hovering around, hovering around. Um, basically here we're at the halfway point. And so now my average is somewhere around like 600, 500. So we're not doing very well yet. We're not even like crawling or walking basically. Um, as we keep going though, now we're getting pretty good pretty quickly. So we get into the 1000. So now we're crawling. Now we're now we're walking, you know, we're a little toddler scooting around, we jump up to 17. So it's almost like, ooh, like running chasing little brother around the yard or something like that big brother. Um, I'm the oldest of six. So I like this relates maps directly to that, then we break into like the 2100s and the 2000s. So that means like, we're actually like running and stuff. Um, so yeah, we get all the way up. I think the highest in this was like 24. Um, and then I can run this and we'll save it. And this is just more code, but it's, it's all the same, but this basically like evaluates and saves the videos and pretty much this is what we get. So my score on this model, the best was 2391 um, and some benchmarking for this, um, you can see it like deep deterministic policy gradient doesn't do very well at all. Um, theirs that they train specifically for this does a little bit better. TD3 is off the charts. So, um, and then this is like, uh, I'll share this as well. This is just some benchmarking. You can kind of see there's a couple of, there's a couple of models uh, that outperform this in certain environments, but overall TD3 is the purple in all these graphs. You can see it's just a, a pretty state-of-the-art um, algorithm. Um, and this was published in 2019. So I don't know what where it's at now in terms of like what the actual state-of-the-art state-of-the-art is, but this one's a pretty, it was pretty groundbreaking when they, when they uh, came out with the paper. So yeah, that's, uh, that's gonna do it. Y'all got any questions? 
Like, where do you like find these papers? Like, I hear that a lot. Oh, I found this paper. Um, you just Google papers about machine learning. Uh, yeah, I would um, open. Uh, so DeepMind, if you just go to their website, they have a lot of papers that are open source, and they have like a lot of really cool stuff. Um, open AI, if you Google that, they have a lot of papers as well. Um, I know the NIPS, I think the NIPS conference is going on right now. And usually there's a lot of papers that are coming out in association with that. Um, so that's kind of like where I would source some papers from. Um, if you start reading like different books, they'll like, or just like even like articles, like on towards data science, um, they'll reference a lot of papers sometimes. So you can just like kind of uh, stumble upon them as well. But yeah, if you want some papers, just talk to me. I got it. I got, I got more papers than I can read. No, I'll, I'll add to Justin, like a lot of times you find an article that's on something cool. Chances are that article is based off of a paper. So you just find the source of the paper or papers and that's a good way to find papers as well. Uh, I wanna add one thing. So Justin's actually showing a very complicated method of it. Um, but again, it gets back to what we talked about, right? We have probabilities of good outcomes. We have an agent that's going to navigate through them. And we're trying to kind of figure out the best ways of getting exploitation and exploration trade-offs in this process. This is just much more complicated and involved that gets much better results, but it's still the same process. Also, this process literally maps to how you learn how anything learns, but specifically us. And actually like I posted that video last weekend. Um, if you watch that video, there's a formula in that video that maps one-to-one -to, -one to the formula in the Bellman equation that is underpinning this algorithm. So it's pretty interesting, but yeah, that's all I got. Thank you all. And good job. That Thank was you. your last like kind of real assignment. Now you have Capstone 3 to focus on, sort of. Well, I guess, I guess you kind of have case study. Yeah. Yeah, everyone get some rest. Uh, we'll go over the case study tomorrow. You'll have two days to work on it. Um, as you'll see, it's putting a lot of different things together. So look forward to having fun. Don't worry about trying to study for it because there's no reason to. You'll have two days to work on it. It says, don't study, Danny. <laughs>